What are the different types of plastids? Proplastids can differentiate into several types of plastids that are involved in cellular storage. Ameloplasts store starch, protonoplasts store proteins, and aleoplasts store lipids. In addition, some proplastids develop into chromoplasts. Can cells be seen without a microscope? Yes, but not many. Most cells are far smaller than the period at the end of the sentence. Bird and frog egg cells may be somewhat larger and can in fact be observed by the unaided eye. What was the first virus to be isolated in a laboratory? In 1935 Wendell Stanley, 1904-1971, of the Rockefeller Institute. Known today as Rockefeller University, prepared an extract of the tobacco mosaic virus and purified it. The purified virus precipitated in the form of crystals. During this investigation Stanley was able to demonstrate that viruses can be regarded as chemical matter rather than as living organisms. The purified crystals retain the ability to infect healthy tobacco plants, thus characterizing them as viruses, not merely chemical compounds derived from a virus. Subsequent studies showed that the tobacco mosaic virus consisted of a protein and a nucleic acid. Further studies showed that this virus consisted of RNA, ribonucleic acid, surrounded by a protein coat. Stanley was awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1946 for his discovery. Do animals have friends? Animals do form social attachments, friends, among their peers. For example, among savanna baboons, bonds between males and females are a central feature of a society. Behaviors like allogrooming, grooming another animal, and reciprocal altruism. Helping another animal, allow unrelated animals to form enduring bonds. What is a peroxisome and what is its function in a cell? Peroxisomes, also discovered by Christian de Duva, 1917, are surrounded by a single membrane and are the most common type of microbody in cells. They are especially prominent in algae, the photosynthetic cells of plants, and both mammalian kidney and liver cells. Peroxisomes contain detoxifying enzymes and produce catalase, which breaks down hydrogen peroxide into hydrogen and water. What traits of peas did Mendel study?
Mendel studied peas of distinct and recognizable plant varieties. Mendel's experiments included the characteristics of height, flower color, pea color, pea shape, pod color, and the position of flowers on the stem. How do cells respond to cellular signals? In order to respond to a signal, a cell needs a receptor molecule that recognizes the signal. A cell's response to a specific signal varies according to the signal. Some signals are local signals, example. Growth factors, while others act as distance signals, example hormones. There are two basic types of hormones. Those that bind to receptors on the cell surface and those whose receptors are found within cytoplasm. Both types cause the cellular machinery to change its activities. What is the cell cycle and how is it controlled? The life cycle of a single eukaryotic cell is known as the cell cycle. The cycle has two major phases, interphase and mitosis. When a cell is not dividing, it is in interphase, for example. A mature neuron conducting an impulse is in interphase. Some cells remain in interphase almost indefinitely. Interphase includes the G1, S, and G2 phases, which are periods of growth during which a cell increases in size, complexity, and protein content. The G1 phase prepares for DNA synthesis, known as the S phase, and G2 prepares for both mitosis and the synthesis of proteins. Cells that undergo mitotic phases of division and renewal are cyclically predictable. An example of this would be an epithelial cell, which divides about every 15 days. The phase of mitosis, also known as M phase, may require a great deal of preparation time. Who was Ernst Haeckel? Ernst Haeckel, 1834-1919, was a physician who became a fervent evolutionist after reading on the origin of species. Although he differed with Charles Darwin over natural selection as the primary mode of evolution, Heckel is best known for his attempts to tie the stages of development to the stages of evolution. Ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny. He thought that each stage of the developmental process was a depiction of an evolutionary ancestor. Heckel is also credited with coining the terms phylum, phylogeny, and ecology. What are the fight or flight hormones? Epinephrine and norepinephrine are released by the adrenal glands in times of stress. The familiar feelings of a pounding, racing heart, increased respiration. Elevated blood pressure and goosebumps on the skin are responses to stressful circumstances.
What is a homeo box gene? The homeo box is specific subset of nucleotides in homeotic. Genes that have important roles in embryonic development. Homeotic genes code for proteins that act as transcription factor. Enhancing the rate at which certain DNA sequences are transcribed. The similarity of the sequence in different groups of species is. Another indication of the shared evolutionary history of species. Why is DNA such a stable molecule? DNA is a stable molecule due to the stacking interaction between the adjacent base pairs in the helix and the hydrogen bonding between bases. This stability has allowed researchers to harvest DNA from extinct species. What is an artificial chromosome? An artificial chromosome is a new type of vector that allows cloning of larger pieces of DNA. It consists of a telomere at each end, a centromere sequence, and specific sites at which foreign DNA can be inserted. Once the DNA fragment is spliced in, the engineered chromosome is reinserted into a yeast cell. The yeast then reproduces the chromosome as if it were part of the normal yeast genome. As a result, a colony of yeast cells would then all contain a specific fragment of DNA. Which antibiotics are most effective against gram-positive bacteria? and which are most effective against gram-negative bacteria. Penicillin and its semi-synthetic derivatives are effective against gram-positive bacteria. The aminoglycosides, such as gentamicin, neomycin, and canamycin, are effective against gram-negative bacteria. Antibiotics that are effective against a broad range of gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria are called broad-spectrum antibiotics. How do schooling fishes swim so close without colliding? A fish school travels in a smooth movement, each fish responds to movements of other fish. Such that if one fish changes direction, all of the others will move accordingly. With eyes placed on the side of the head, fishes can see what is next to them and use this to move. A complex combination of hearing, lateral line system, sight and smell allows fishes to establish position and direction in a school. How were fungi involved in World War I? During World War I the Germans needed glycerol to make nitroglycerin. 
which is used in the production of explosives such as dynamite. Before the war, the Germans had imported their glycerol. But the British naval blockade during the war prevented such imports. The German scientist Karl Neuberg, 1877-1956, knew that trace levels of glycerol are produced when Saccharomyces cerevisiae is used during the alcoholic fermentation of sugar. He sought and developed a modified fermentation process in which the yeast would produce significant quantities of glycerol and less ethanol. The production of glycerol was improved by adding 3.5% sodium sulfite at a pH of 7.0 to the fermentation process, which blocked one chemical reaction in the metabolic pathway. Neuberg's procedure was implemented with the conversion of German beer breweries to glycerol plants. The plants produced 1,000 tons of glycerol per month. After the war ended, the production of glycerol was not in demand, so it was suspended. RNA When was RNA discovered? By the 1940s it was known that there was another kind of nucleic acid other than DNA, this one called RNA. Phoebus Levine, 1869-1940, a Russian-born chemist. Further refined the work of Albrecht Kossel, 1853-1927. Kossel was awarded a Nobel Prize in 1910 for determining the composition of nucleon. At the time of Kossel's work, it was not clear that DNA and RNA were different substances. In 1909 Levine isolated the carbohydrate portion of nucleic acid from yeast and identified it as the pentose sugar ribose. In 1929 he succeeded in identifying the carbohydrate portion of the nucleic acid isolated from the thymus of an animal. It was also a pentose sugar, but it differed from ribose in that it lacked one oxygen atom. Levine called the new substance deoxyribose. These studies define the chemical differences between DNA and RNA by their sugar molecules. What was the role of Maurice Wilkins in early DNA research? Maurice Wilkins 1916, was trained as a physicist and worked briefly on the Manhattan Project, where he became disillusioned and then turned to the field of biophysics. He worked at King's College, London, with John Randall, where together they began to use X-ray crystallography to study DNA. Both Wilkins and Rosalind Franklin worked in the same laboratory. But their relationship was not one of cooperation. This ultimately slowed the progress of their work. What is punctuated equilibrium? Punctuated equilibrium is a model of macroevolution first detailed in 1972 by Niles Eldridge, 1942, and Stephen Jay Gould, 
1941 to 2002. It can be considered either a rival or supplementary model to the more gradual moving model of evolution posited by neo-Darwinism. The punctuated equilibrium model essentially asserts that most of geological history shows periods of little evolutionary change, followed by short. Geologically speaking, a few million years, periods of rapid evolutionary change. Gould and Eldridge's work has been buttressed by the discovery of the Hox genes that control embryonic development. Hox genes are found in all vertebrates and many other species as well. They control the placement of body parts in the developing embryo. Relatively minor mutations in these gene sequences could result in major body changes for species in a short period of time. Thereby giving rise to new forms of organisms and therefore new species. What is wormwood? Artemisia absinthium, known as wormwood, is a hardy, fragrant perennial that grows to heights of 2 to 4 feet, 6 to 1.2 m. Wormwood is native to Europe but has been widely naturalized in North America. Absinthe, a liquor, is distilled and flavored using this plant. Absinthe was banned in the United States in the early 1900s. Because it is considered habit-forming and hazardous to one's health. What is behavioral ecology? Behavioral ecology investigates the relationship between the environment and animal behavior. It emphasizes the evolutionary roots of the behavior, in contrast to the classical studies involving animals in laboratory settings. George C. Williams, 1926, in his book Adaptation and Natural Selection. 1966, first posed the question as to how behavior affects evolutionary fitness. By showing that behavior is responsive to the environmental forces that drive natural selection. And evolutionary fitness, researchers have demonstrated that the environment plays a crucial role in determining which behaviors are exhibited in natural settings. What part of the American chestnut tree does the fungus Cryphonectria parasitica attack? Cryphonectria parasitica, or chestnut blight, attacks a tree's layers of living bark and the adjacent layers of wood. The fungus kills the cells present in the bark that serve the function of carrying the food made in the leaves of a tree to other parts of a tree. As such, nutrients are not able to reach various parts of a tree. The fungus also clogs the cells present in the wood of a tree's trunk that serve to carry water and nutrients through the body of a tree. This fungus leaves the roots of a tree unaffected, allowing a tree to send up new sprouts. However, 
within a number of years, the bark and wood of new sprouts also become affected. Who was Alfred Russell Wallace? Alfred Russell Wallace, 1823-1913, was a naturalist whose work was presented with Charles Darwin's. 1809-1882, at the Linnean Society of London in 1858. After extensive travels in the Amazon basin. Wallace independently came to the same conclusions as Darwin. On the significance of natural selection in driving the diversification of species. Wallace also worked as a natural history specimen collector in Indonesia. Wallace, like Darwin, also read the work of Thomas Malthus, 1766 to 1834. During an attack of malaria in Indonesia, Wallace made the connection between the Malthusian concept of the struggle for existence and a mechanism for change within populations. From this, Wallace wrote the essay that was eventually presented with Darwin's work in 1858. How do cells become cancerous? Cancer is caused by the unrestrained growth of cells. Cells that do not follow the rules of normal cell cycling may eventually become cancerous. This means that the cells reproduce more often than normal, creating tumors. Usually this happens over an extended period of time and begins with changes at the molecular level. There are more than 100 distinct types of cancer. Each of which behaves in a specific fashion and responds to treatment differently. How are plant cells able to use light to produce sugars? Plant cells use chloroplasts to convert light energy to chemical energy, sugar. These chloroplasts, which are likely to have originated as free-living bacteria, Use the energy contained in UV radiation to raise electrons to higher energy states through the process of photosynthesis. The energized electrons are used to build and rearrange a number of different molecules. Some of these eventually become glucose. Which in turn can be used to produce sucrose, also known as table sugar. If an allele is lethal, then why would it not disappear from a population totally? In the example of cystic fibrosis, heterozygotes may be more resistant to life-threatening. Dehydration caused by diseases such as cholera, which is accompanied by massive diarrhea. In cholera, caused by the lethal bacterium Vibrio cholera. The bacteria produce a toxin that causes considerable loss of water, dehydration, and death within a short time. Another example of heterozygote advantage is the high frequency of heterozygotes for sickle cell anemia in Africa. And increased resistance to malaria.
who was the first to use the word prion? In a paper Stanley Pruss Inner, 1942, wrote in 1982, he used the term prion in place of the expression protonaceous infectious particle when describing an infectious agent. Pruss Inner was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1997. What is a nucleotide analog? Nucleotide analogs are compounds that look like the nucleotides in DNA. They are used as antiviral compounds because the nucleic acids assembled with these analogs fall apart. Therefore, the viral genome cannot be copied and the infection cycle is broken. AZT is an example of a drug that interferes with HIV's ability to replicate its genome. By substituting azidothymidine for thymidine, thus terminating viral DNA reproduction. How are plants identified based on their growth patterns? Herbaceous or non-woody plants die at the end of each growing season. Woody plants add a new layer of wood each year. Why do some genetic conditions skip a generation? Conditions that are the result of homozygous recessive inheritance can often skip a generation. If a homozygous recessive individual produces offspring with a homozygous dominant individual, then all of their children will be heterozygous and not exhibit the condition. However, should two normal appearing, heterozygous individuals marry, some of their children may have the condition. This also depends on whether the condition is the result of single trait inheritance or the combination of genes and environmental factors. Environmental factors absent in one generation but present in the next. Drought, heat wave, etc., might cause a trait to suddenly reappear. What is the light source for a spectrophotometer? Most commonly, a spectrophotometer uses white light as its light source. White light is a combination of all visible wavelengths. Ultraviolet and infrared wavelengths may also be used. What does pH mean when applied to soil? Literally, pH stands for potential of hydrogen and is the term used by soil scientists to represent the hydrogen ion concentration in a soil sample. The relative alkalinity acidity is commonly expressed in terms of the symbol pH. The neutral point in the scale is 7. Soil testing below 7 is said to be acidic, 
soil testing above pH 7 is alkaline. The pH values are based on logarithms with a base of 10. Thus, a soil testing pH 5 is 10 times as acidic as soil testing pH 6. While a soil testing pH 4 is 100 times as acidic as soil testing pH 6. What plants can be used to determine blood type? Lectins proteins that bind to carbohydrates on cell surfaces found in lotus plants. As well as jack and lima beans can be used to determine a person's blood type. Lectins bind to glycoproteins present on the plasma membrane of red blood cells. Because the cells of different blood types have distinct glycoproteins. Cells of each blood type bind to a specific lectin. How do rodents, rabbits, and hares digest cellulose? Unlike cows, which have a rumen to digest cellulose, rodents, rabbits, and hares have a cecum, a large pouch to digest cellulose with the assistance of microorganisms. The cecum is located at the junction between the small and large intestines. It is impossible for these animals to regurgitate the contents of their stomachs. Like ruminants, because the cecum is located beyond the stomach. Instead, these animals pass their food through their digestive tract a second time by ingesting their feces. When feces pass through the digestive tract, it is possible for these animals to absorb the nutrients produced by the microorganisms in the cecum. Do fungi only decompose dead and decaying organic matter? Not only do fungi consume dead and decaying organic matter, but some attack living plants and animals as they serve as a source for necessary organic molecules. Fungi often cause diseases among plants and animals. They are some of the most harmful pests to living plants and are responsible for billions of dollars in agricultural losses each year. Food products that have been harvested and stored are not immune to fungal decay. Fungi often secrete substances into the foods they attack, making the foods unpalatable or even poisonous. How can a population become reproductively isolated? Reproductive isolation means that individuals of one population are unable to exchange gene sequences. Eggs and sperm, with individuals from another. This means that natural selection will work on the isolated population independently from the rest of the species. Therefore increasing the likelihood that the isolates will become a separate species. Methods by which this can occur include geographic isolation, habitat isolation, and temporal isolation. In other words, 
two populations can become physically separated by a barrier like an ocean or mountain range. They can use different parts of the same habitat, birds that visit only the tops of trees as opposed to the lower branches. Or they may be active at different times nocturnal and diurnal insects, for example. What is the function of lysosomes? Lysosomes are single, membrane-bound sacs that contain digestive enzymes. The digestive enzymes break down all the major classes of macromolecules including proteins, carbohydrates, fats, and nucleic acids throughout a cell's lifetime. The lysosomal enzymes digest old organelles to make room for newly formed organelles. The lysosomes allow cells to continually renew themselves and prevent the accumulation of cellular toxins. What is apical dominance? Apical dominance is a phenomenon in which the terminal bud produces hormones inhibiting the growth of axillary buds. This allows the plant to grow taller, increasing its exposure to light. Under certain conditions, the axillary buds begin to grow, producing branches. When the terminal bud is pruned, pinched back, on house plants and fruit trees. Axillary bud growth is stimulated, producing bushy, full-looking plants. Why don't organisms that produce toxins die during the synthesis of toxic material? Organisms produce toxins as a defense mechanism, therefore. Most organisms are immune to their own toxins as well as that of other members of the same species. Toxins are a cell product packaged into a membranous sac known as a vesicle. The contents of the vesicle are secreted into the salivary gland. Skin surface or fangs of the organism during the process of exocytosis. The toxin is then injected, ingested, or absorbed by other organisms often a predator. Each toxin creates a specific effect. For example, the snake venom known as bungarotoxin deactivates acetylcholine receptors on muscles. Since it is secreted externally, it is unlikely that the snake producing the toxin would be affected. How does a primary cell wall differ from a secondary cell wall? A primary cell wall is laid down during cell division and is relatively thin and flexible in order to accommodate cell enlargement and elongation. It is strengthened when the cell matures and stops growing. A secondary cell wall is present between the plasma membrane and primary cell wall in some cells. The secondary wall is often deposited in several laminated layers. It is strong and durable, and provides both cell protection and support. 
wood consists mainly of secondary cell walls. What is phylogeny? Phylogeny is the evolutionary history of a group of species. This history is often displayed as a phylogenetic tree. In which individual species or groups of species are listed at the end of the branches. The nexuses where branches join indicate common ancestors. Systematics is the area of biology devoted to the classification of organisms. Originally introduced by Carl Linnaeus. 1707-1778, who based his classification system on physical traits. Systematics now includes the similarities of DNA, RNA, and proteins across species as criteria for classification. What are sclerotia? Sclerotia are the aggregate of hyphae enclosed in thick walls that form a protective covering when conditions. Temperature and water, are not conducive for growth. When conditions improve, the sclerotia germinate and produce stalks containing spore-bearing bodies. Ascospores are embedded in the tips of the stalks. When transported by wind, ascospores may land on grasses or grains, especially rye. The sclerotia continue to grow after they have landed on the host plants. What products does one acre of trees yield when cut and processed? There are approximately 660 trees on one acre of forest, this number of trees can yield approximately 105,000 feet. 32,004 m, of lumber, more than 30 tons, 30,000 kilograms, of paper, or 16 cords of firewood. Is DNA always copied exactly? Considering how many cells there are in the human body and how often it occurs. DNA replication is fairly accurate. Spontaneous damage to DNA is low. Occurring at the rate of 1 to 100 mutations per 10 billion cells in bacteria. The rate for eukaryotic genes is higher, about 1 to 10 mutations per million gametes. The rate of mutation can vary according to different genes in different organisms. What is green fluorescent protein? Green fluorescent protein is a protein found in a luminescent jellyfish. Aquaria victoria, that lives in the cold waters of the northern Pacific. Bioluminescence is the production of light by living organisms. These jellyfish contain two proteins. A bioluminescent protein called equorin that emits blue light, and an accessory green fluorescent protein, GFP. However, 
what we actually see when the jellyfish fluoresces is the conversion of the blue light emitted by equorin to a green light a metabolic reaction facilitated by the GFP. Since GFP is simply a protein, it is often used both as a marker for gene transfer and for localization of proteins. There are a variety of green fluorescent proteins that can glow different colors. Are all mutations bad? No, all mutations are not bad. Although people may use the term mutant in a disparaging manner. Mutations are important to a population's gene pool because of the variation they contribute. Without mutations, there would be no variations and Following along Darwin's thinking, no natural selection What is biomagnification? Some compounds are not recycled by decomposers, nor are they released into the atmosphere like energy. Instead, they remain in the ecosystem and virtually unchanged. Form as they are passed from one organism to another by predation. If a larger fish consumes five smaller ones every day for several years, some of the compounds in the flesh of those little fishes will be transferred to the larger fish as it builds and repairs its own structures. Over time, the larger fish will accumulate many units of such compounds. An example of these compounds is the pesticide DDT. The toxic effects of DDT may not be apparent in the small concentrations found in the little fishes. But the accumulation over time in the larger fish will allow the effects to be magnified. This may become even more apparent as the chemicals move up the trophic pyramid. To the top predators like the birds, or humans, that eat those larger fishes. To describe this phenomenon, ecologists use the terms biomagnification and bioaccumulation in Recognition of the disproportional effect these toxins have on the upper levels of the ecological pyramid. What are demelinating diseases? Demyelinating diseases involve damage to the myelin sheath of neurons in either the peripheral or central nervous system. Multiple sclerosis, MS, is a chronic, potentially debilitating disease that affects the myelin sheath of the central nervous system. The illness is probably an autoimmune disease. In MS the body directs antibodies and white blood cells against proteins in the myelin sheath. Surrounding nerves in the brain and spinal cord. This causes inflammation and injury to the myelin sheath. Demyelination is the term used for a loss of myelin. A substance in the white matter that insulates nerve endings. Myelin helps the nerves receive and interpret messages from the brain at maximum speed. When nerve endings lose the substance, they cannot function properly. Leading to patches of scarring, 
or sclerosis. The result may be multiple areas of sclerosis. The damage slows or blocks muscle coordination. Visual sensation, and other functions that rely on nerve signals. In the autoimmune disorder known as Guillain-Barré syndrome, the body's immune system attacks part of the peripheral nervous system. The immune system starts to destroy the myelin sheath that surrounds. The axons of many peripheral nerves, or even the axons themselves. The myelin sheath surrounding the axon speeds up the transmission of nerve signals and allows the transmission of signals over long distances. In diseases such as Guillain-Barre in which the peripheral nerves myelin sheaths are injured or degraded, the nerves cannot transmit signals efficiently. Consequently, muscles begin to lose their ability to respond to the brain's commands. Commands that must be carried through the nerve network. The brain also receives fewer sensory signals from the rest of the body. Resulting in an inability to feel textures, heat, pain, and other sensations. Alternately, the brain may receive inappropriate signals that result in tingling. Crawling skin or painful sensations. Because the signals to and from the arms and legs must travel the longest distances. These extremities are most vulnerable to interruption. The first symptoms of this disorder include varying degrees of weakness or tingling sensations in the legs. In many instances the weakness and abnormal sensations spread to the arms and upper body. In severe cases the patient may be almost totally paralyzed since the muscles cannot be used at all. In these cases the disorder is life-threatening potentially interfering with breathing and at times, with blood pressure or heart rate and is considered a medical emergency. Such a patient is often put on a respirator to assist with breathing and is watched closely for problems such as an abnormal heartbeat, infections, blood clots, and high or low blood pressure. Most patients, however, recover from even the most severe cases of Guillain-Barre syndrome. Although some continue to have a certain degree of weakness. What are the stationary and mobile phases of paper chromatography? The stationary phase of paper chromatography is filter paper. And the mobile phase is an organic solvent or mixture. A small drop of the liquid mixture is placed at one end of the paper. The end of the paper is then immersed in a solvent. As the solvent moves up the paper, any molecules in the mixture that are soluble in the solvent will move with the solvent. Based on their solubility to the mobile phase and attraction to the stationary phase, some molecules will move faster than others. Each different molecule in the mixture will move at a different speed and will be at a different position on the finished chromatogram. How does the Biorid test indicate the presence of protein?
the bond between the amino group and the carboxyl acid. Group on adjacent amino acids in a protein is a peptide bond. When the biuret reagent, 1% solution of copper sulfate is added to a solution containing peptide bonds, the solution turns a violet color. The violet color is a positive test for the presence of protein. The more 516 intense the color, the greater the number of peptide bonds that react. What is the cytoskeleton and what is its function? The cytoskeleton is a structural feature of eukaryotic cells that was revealed by advanced microscopy. It consists of an extensive three-dimensional network of interconnected filaments and tubules. That extends throughout the cytosol, from the nucleus to the inner surface of the cell membrane. These filaments and tubules determine cell shape and facilitate a variety of cell movements. Who was the first individual to find the gene for breast cancer? Mary Claire King, 1946, determined that in 5 to 10 percent of those women with breast cancer, the cancer is the result of a mutation of a gene on chromosome 17, the BRCA1 breast cancer 1. The BRCA1 gene is a tumor suppressor gene and is also linked to ovarian cancer. Subsequently, other researchers were able to clone the gene and pinpoint its exact location on chromosome 17. Why are fall leaves bright red in some years and dull in others? Two factors are necessary in the production of red autumn leaves. There must be warm, bright, sunny days during which the leaves manufacture sugar. Warm days must be followed by cool nights with temperatures below 45 degrees Fahrenheit 7 degrees Celsius. This weather combination traps the sugar and other materials in the leaves. Thus resulting in the manufacture of red anthocyanin. A warm cloudy day restricts the formation of bright colors. With decreased sunlight, sugar production is decreased and this small amount of sugar is transported back to the trunk and roots where it has no color effect who were the founders of modern bacteriology German bacteriologist Robert Koch, 1843 to 1910, and French chemist Louis Pasteur, 1822 to 1895, are considered the founders of bacteriology. In 1864, Pasteur devised a way to slowly heat foods and beverages to a temperature that was high enough to kill most of the microorganisms that would cause spoilage and disease. But would not 90 ruin or curdle the food. This process is called pasteurization. 
by demonstrating that tuberculosis was an infectious disease caused by a specific species of bacillus. Cook in 1882 set the groundwork for public health. Measures that would go on to significantly reduce the occurrences of many diseases. His laboratory procedures, methodologies for isolating microorganisms, and four postulates for determining. Agents of disease gave medical investigators valuable insights into the control of bacterial infections. What is the origin of land plants? Many scientists believe land plants evolved from green algae. Green algae, especially the carpites, share a number of biochemical and metabolic traits with plants. Both contain the same photosynthetic pigment scaridines, xanthophils, as well as chlorophylls A and B. Cellulose is a major component of the cell walls of plants and algae. And both store their excess carbohydrates as starch. In addition, some aspects of cell division, particularly the formation of new cross walls, only occurs in plants and certain carpites, such as species of the genera Serrera and Colechid. Do camels store water in their humps? The hump or humps do not store water, since they are fat reservoirs. The ability to go long periods without drinking water, up to 10 months if there is plenty. Of green vegetation and due to feed on, results from a number of physiological adaptations. One major factor is that camels can lose up to 40% of their body weight with no ill effects. A camel can also withstand a variation of its body temperature by as much as 14 degrees Fahrenheit 8 degrees Celsius. A camel can drink 30 gallons, 113.5 liters. Of water in 10 minutes and up to 50 gallons, 189 liters, over several hours. A one humped camel is called a dromedary or Arabian camel. A Bactrian camel has two humps and lives in the wild on the Goba Desert. Today, the Bactrian is confined to Asia, while most of the Arabian camels are on African soil. What is a monkey ball tree? The Osage orange tree, Maclura pomifer, produces large, green, orange-like fruits. The fruit is roughly spherical, 3.5 to 5 in. 8.8 to 12.7 centimeters in diameter and have a coarse pebbly surface Are there reliable rules to identify poisonous mushrooms There are no general, reliable rules to identify poisonous mushrooms. Some of the edible varieties are quite easily recognized. But some edible varieties closely resemble poisonous mushrooms and can only be distinguished by an expert.
The common lore that poisonous mushrooms make silver spoons turn black. While mushrooms that can be peeled are edible, is not true. Some of the deadliest mushrooms, Amanitas, do no turn silver spoons black and can be peeled. The only rule to follow is that one must be able to identify a mushroom with certainty prior to eating it. What groups of reptiles are living today? The three orders of reptiles that are alive today are, 1, Chelonia, which includes turtles, terrapins, and tortoises, 2, Squamata, which includes lizards and snakes, and 3, Crocodilia, which includes crocodiles and alligators. What is the cellular fountain of youth? Research on telomeres and telomerase shows that cells can be kept alive far beyond their normal lifespan. Specific studies have been carried out on the roundworm, c. Elegans, in which longer lifespans were observed in worms with longer telomeres. How many mitochondria are there in a cell? The number of mitochondria varies according to the type of cell. The number ranges 44 between 1 and 10,000, but averages about 200. Each cell in the human liver has the structure of a chloroplast. Over 1,000 mitochondria. Cells with high energy requirements, such as muscle cells, may have many more mitochondria. What is the difference between short-day plants and long-day plants? Short-day and long-day plants exhibit a response to photoperiodism. Or the changes in light and dark in a 24-hour cycle. Short-day plants form flowers when the days become shorter than a critical length. While long-day plants form flowers when the days become longer than a critical length. Short-day plants bloom in late summer or autumn in middle latitudes. Examples of short-day plants are chrysanthemums, goldenrods, poinsettias, soybeans, and ragweed. Long-day plants bloom in spring and early summer. Some examples of long-day plants are clover, irises, and hollyhocks. Florists and commercial plant growers can adjust the amount of light a plant receives to force it to bloom out of season. How does the mark recapture method estimate a wildlife population? Researchers set traps to capture a population sampling in a given area. The captured animals are marked, or tagged, and then released. After a certain amount of time the traps are set again. The second time, 
both marked and unmarked animals will be captured. The proportion of marked to unmarked animals gives an estimate of the size of the entire population. The equation used to estimate the number of individuals in the population is Marked individuals x total catch second time n equals recaptured marked individuals where n is the number of individuals in the population. A disadvantage of this method is that it assumes that a marked individual has the same chance of being trapped as an unmarked individual. Individuals that were trapped once may be wary of traps. Or they may seek traps since they have learned that traps provide food. What is unique about egg incubation in some amphibians? Unlike most toads and frogs the female Suriname toad, Pipa Pipa, carries her eggs in special pockets in the skin on her back. Each egg develops in its own pocket in the female's skin. The tadpole's tails are plugged into the mother's system. Similar to the placenta of mammals, exchanging nutrients and gases. The tadpoles develop quickly, undergoing metamorphosis while still in the pockets. Upon transformation into miniature frogs, they break free of their pocket walls to begin independent lives. How did Louis Pasteur's theory of fermentation differ from the accepted concept of fermentation? Louis Pasteur, 1822-1895 Proposed that fermentation is a process carried out by what he referred to as living ferments. The other renowned chemists of the time believed that fermentation was a purely chemical process in which microorganisms were a byproduct, not the cause. How does column chromatography differ from other chromatographic methods? Column chromatography is generally used as a purification technique. It isolates desired compounds from a mixture. Column chromatography separates molecules according to their size and shape. The stationary phase, a solid adsorbent, is placed in a vertical glass column and the mobile phase. A liquid, is added to the top and flows down through the column by either gravity or external pressure. The mixture to be analyzed by column chromatography is applied to the top of the column. The liquid solvent, the eluent, is passed through the column by gravity or by the application of air pressure. An equilibrium is established between the solute adsorbed on the adsorbent and the eluting solvent flowing down through the column. Because the different components in the mixture have different interactions, with the stationary and mobile phases. They will be carried along with the mobile phase to varying degrees, and a separation will be achieved. The individual components, or elutants, are collected as the solvent drips from the bottom of the column.
How are bacteriophages classified? Bacteriophages are classified as either lytic or temperate. Lytic phages destroy the host cell. When a lytic virus infects a susceptible host cell, it uses the host's metabolic machinery to replicate viral nucleic acid and produce viral proteins. There are five steps in this process, attachment, penetration, replication, assembly, and release. During this process, which takes approximately 30 minutes, almost 100 phages are released. Temperate phages do not always destroy their host cell. After attachment and penetration, the DNA from a temperate phage becomes incorporated into the host bacterial DNA, it is then referred to as a prop hage. The prop hage replicates at the same time as the bacterial DNA. The viral genes may be repressed indefinitely. Bacterial cells carrying prop hages are known as lysogenic cells. Why do cows have four stomachs? Cows have four stomachs in order to process their low-quality diet of grass. The four sections are, 1, the rumen, 2, the reticulum, 3, the omasum, and 4, the abomasum. Cows are a type of mammal known as a ruminant. Ruminants eat rapidly and do not chew much of their food completely before they swallow it. The liquid part of their food enters the reticulum first, while the solid part of their food enters the rumen, where it softens. Bacteria in the rumen initially break the food material down as a first step in digestion. Ruminants later regurgitate the partially liquefied plant parts into the mouth where they continue to munch it in a process known as chewing their cud. Cows chew their cud about 6 to 8 times per day. Spending a total of 5 to 7 hours in rumination. The chewed cud goes directly into the other chambers of the stomach. Where various microorganisms assist in further digestion. Herbivores have a longer small intestine to allow maximum time for the absorption of nutrients. Who coined the term chromatography? The Russian-Italian biochemist Mikhail Semyonovich Tsvet, or Tsvet. 1872-1919, coined the term chromatography and published the first paper on the method in 1903. The term comes from the Greek words chroma. Meaning color, and graphine, meaning writing or drawing. How can genes be used to detect multigene disorders? DNA chips and microarray technology can be used as a diagnostic tool when searching for multiple mutations that can be part of a multigene disease, such as some types of cancers. 
DNA chip technology is now being used to screen for mutations in the P53 gene. Approximately 60% of all cancers are linked to mutations of the P53 gene. Eventually, these methods will be used to collectively generate an individual. Genetic profile of all mutations associated with known genetic disorders. Can animals learn from other animals? Yes, animals can learn from other animals. Researchers observing the behavior of Japanese macaques would leave pieces of potato on the beach of the island where the study occurred. Every day the macaques would spend their time carefully cleaning the sand off their treats. Then one day a young female carried her potato to the sea, where she rinsed it off. Soon her mother was following her example. And then other females as well until finally the entire troop had learned the behavior. What was the first group of vertebrates? The first vertebrates were fishes that appeared 500 million years ago. They were agnathans, from the Greek terms a, meaning without, and nath, meaning jaw, small. Jawless fishes up to about 8 in, 20 centimeters, long and also known as ostracoderms, shell skin. Because their bodies were covered with bony plates, most notably a head shield protecting the brain. How are tree rings used to date historical events? The study of tree rings is known as dendrochronology. Every year, trees produce an annular ring composed of one wide, light ring and one narrow, dark ring. During spring and early summer, tree stem cells grow rapidly and larger. Thus producing the wide, light ring. In winter, Growth is greatly reduced and cells are much smaller, producing the narrow, dark ring. In the coldest part of winter or the dry heat of summer, no cells are produced. Comparing pieces of dead trees of unknown age with the rings of living trees. Allows scientists to establish the date when the fragment was part of a living tree. This technique has been used to date the ancient Pueblos throughout the southwestern United States. A subfield of dendrochronology is dendroclimatology. Scientists study the tree rings of very old trees to determine climatic conditions of the past, the effects of droughts, pollution. Insect infestations, fires, volcanoes, and earthquakes are all visible in tree rings. <laughs>